and welcome to quarter one week five day two of weekly classes today we are going to continue finalizing our sword all right so far we have created the blade which uh, is just the blade itself and the handguard uh, we set up the concept art we created the planes we prepared the planes um, we modeled the blade and we modeled the cross guard so today we're going to make the handle itself and we're going to do a little bit of smoothing and then we're going to do some coloring some basic coloring so we're going to get like the leather and the handle and the brass looking uh, cross guard and, and pommel and then uh, yeah so that's where we are that's what we're going to do um, we're going to soften some edges and, and harden some edges we're going to add coloring modify the spec and then we'll render and save it all right so that's where we're at so this is where we left off last time uh, if you haven't, make sure you save your work, because I forgot to last time. Uh, go to File. I'm going to save this as, we're going to call it Day 2 Finished, and we're just going to keep saving it until it's done. Save. All right, great. So what we need to do now is we need to create um, our pommel, all right, our handle and our pommel. So we're going to do that by creating a cylinder, all right? We're going to create a cylinder in the top view. So go ahead and hit T for top all right and then uh, if you haven't done so already go ahead and open up your material editor and grab your modeling material and throw it onto your sword then create your cylinder so click on cylinder uh, I'm gonna hit S for snapping because I like cylinders when I, for snapping I want to make it let's see let's say I don't know, 20, 20 centimeters by whatever I turned it into. So I hit front. So it's going to start out like this. All right. Uh, and that's okay. But I should probably actually have it go the other direction. So for height, instead of 100 should probably move it down I can actually move the whole thing down too I can just simply move it down now as you recall our uh, hilt itself is 25 units down so I can just go negative 25 and and zero this out and it should be there and now we can throw our modeling material on there and then actually start looking at what we need to do okay so from the front um, you'll notice I've got a little bit of an edge that sort of comes out like this. So today we're going to do a lot of scaling and, and modifying things through that. So let's go ahead and open up the Modify tab. And we're going to call this Sword Handle. Okay. Great. Right now it's a cylinder, which is fine. Um, sides. Right now it has 18 sides. 18 is a bad number. Um, the reason it's a bad number, and I'm going to isolate this object so we can look at it from the top. I'm going to add a cap too. The reason 18 is a bad number is because it can't be easily or can't be divided by 4, which means you're always going to have one edge that doesn't have a vertex you can manipulate. So in this case, it's our north to south, our uh, y axis. Um, there's no vertex here. So compare that to 16. When I've got a vertex here and I've got a vertex here that I can work with. So 18's or 16 is a great number. 18 is bad. 20? Not bad. The only problem with 20 is you can't divide it by 8, so we don't have nice quarter angles, but 20 is fine. Makes things look a lot smoother than 16, and it still has uh, plenty of edges to work with. Okay? Uh, 16 is a great number. If you want to get some, something that looks really smooth and still have all those wonderful edges that you were looking for. Uh, 24 is not bad because you still get um, your 45 degree angles as well as your 90 degree angles. And then of course 32 is like super smooth. So I'm gonna stick today, today, um, I think I'm gonna do 16. Keep with the low poly vibe on this whole thing. Now you'll notice I added two cap segments and from the front, I've got a whole bunch of height segments, but I'm probably going to need that. So I'm going to right-click and end my isolation there. And we're going to look at 
where we're at. So uh, at this point we can right click and convert it to an editable poly. I'm going to grab edges. Now I can grab an entire loop of an edge by double clicking on any one edge that ends in a loop. Okay, Loop modeling is absolutely critical uh, and we're going to work on that today. Now the cool thing is I, I can actually grab this loop up here. Uh, that's going to be really helpful. So let's do that. So we grab that loop up there, hit front. I'm going to move it down. Just move it down. I've got snapping on, so i got to hit S to turn that off. I'm going to turn off my snapping. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to grab this loop up here. Hit left. And I'm going to expand that out until it reaches the edge here. Now I'm going to hit R for scale. Now, if I scale this with along the, any one axis it may look fine at first but if you look at it it doesn't end up being fine so for now make sure when you scale things either from front or from left you're going to scale using this middle triangle that will scale it out in the two directions equally so let's do that I'll scale that out like that and that gives me this nice edge from the front I want to make sure I'm not going too far. If I go too far, it'll look weird. So left and front are basically the same. The front, the only thing that's front is it's nice because it lets you see exactly how close you are to that edge. That's kind of helpful. Oh, I noticed last time we didn't change our, our handle like we should have. Um, we'll fix that in a second. All right, so, so we've got this edge right here. Um, now see how this, in our concept art, it's a smooth sort of transition? We can do that, we just need to insert more loops. Okay, so once again in Edge, I'm going to marquee select straight across, go to Loop, Insert Loop, and I'm going to rescale that a little bit. Like that, I'm going to even hit W, and move it up a little bit, and rescale it again. Yeah, like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing, go up here, cross across, uh, marquee select across, go to loops, insert loop, same sort of thing, maybe move it up a little bit more, alright, good, uh, double click this one, and maybe scale it in a little bit more, there, cool. Now another thing that we did is we actually have an edge right through here, so we actually inset a little bit. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to grab this entire edge and we're going to chamfer. Chamfer is scary. Uh, it, can, it can go real bad real quick. Uh, but if you have just a single loop and you want to split it into two, chamfer is a great way to do that. And the reason why we're going to split it into two you'll see in a second. So I'm going to go to chamfer, settings, and I'm going to leave it at one. That looks pretty good. At one centimeter uh, and one edge segment. I'll click OK. Now what that does uh, is it gives me a little more geometry to work with and now I can double click on this, get this loop, scoot it in a little bit, and hit W and move it up. So I'm moving it up so it looks like this thing is inset like as though it's wrapped and, and, and capped just like that. I think I can move this one down a little bit more, actually. Eh, maybe not. Loops. Insert loop. Extrude a little bit. Maybe move it down like that. That's pretty cool. That looks good. Looks basically the same. All right. Now, we can do some more loop moving. I'm going to take this. Make sure it's here-ish. Scale it down a little bit. Take this, hit W, I'm going to move it to the center of this like squishy part, and I'm going to chamfer this one as well. Chamfer a little bigger. There we go. Good. So what that does is that gives me an edge that I can sort of keep there, and then this edge, I'm going to move to the skinny part, and then bring it down a little bit. See that? So that gives me that little bump that I was looking for. 
Now, there are other ways to do this, but one of the main goals here is sort of that you, you're learning how to use these different tools. Um, we could use the chamfer tool in a little bit more logical way. So I can actually take this, go to loops, uh, remove loop. All right, so I get rid of that. Uh, grab this whole section, insert loop, figure out exactly where I want it. All right, move the whole thing in. All right, chamfer, this time make it two. Click OK. And now these can come back out kind of like that. Same sort of thing. Actually, I'm going to grab all of them and deselect those. Scoot these in like this. And then you'll notice I've got a whole loop here too. So front. W. Scoot that down. Now you'll notice also that that has uh, some weirdness to it as well. We'll fix that in a second. That's this one vert that's in the center. Uh, front. The W. I'm going to pull it down like that. Now we're going to do some more extruding to get this bottom section out. And I'm going to bring this in to using R for scale. I'll bring in sort of like, sort of like that. Maybe add another loop. Hit the number 2 to get to edges. Or key select these edges and then go to loops, insert loop, scale it again. There. Now, at this point, I'm just sort of trying to follow along with the art itself. Maybe move that up a little bit like that. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, now this next section grab faces. I want to grab all these faces, which will give me the, the bottom and the sides. Hit left again. Except I'm going to deselect this section here. Okay, now from here I'm going to extrude. All right, we're going to extrude just to there. Okay, Let's pull this section out. Uh, I'm going to bevel this time because that is basically the same thing as extrusion. All right, except I can bevel a little easier. I'll bring that out a little bit again. I'll do it again, except this time I extrude that way. I'll bevel in a little bit. I'll do it again. Extrude a little less. Bevel in a little more. And then I think one more will do it. Bevel in. There. Done. All right, all that's left is grab that last little vert. Front, Z for zoom, W, pull it down just a little bit. There, so there we go. And you can adjust this a little bit if you like uh, to make it exactly what you're looking for. I think I might bring that down a little bit and bring this out a little bit. I think I'm going to take that and inset it into there there. So this gives us a little inset. Uh, oops, left Z for zoom. I'm going to make sure I'm going to snap this. Hit S. I'm going to snap it to there so it's nice and flat. Okay, cool. So there we go. That part is basically finished. If I wanted to, I could extend this out a little bit like that. Oops, turn snapping off will help. There. Cool. That's closer to what the original art. Now, that's done. So now I got to do is the pommel or the the handguard. So I'm going to turn off vertex, go back into uh, create mode. From the left view, when we did this last time, we were supposed to adjust this, and I forgot. So go to the modify tab, grab your vertex, grab those vertex and these vertex, and then we're going to hit R to scale them. Just scale them down a little bit. Now, I would modify them. You could probably bring them in if you wanted to. Um, yeah, why not? Oops, missed. Undo. Pull in just a little bit. I also think these should come in just a hair. Just, just a little. Oops. See this? I'm trying to scale it down. They squeeze out. That's because I was already on 
um, I was already on my R key and I hit it again it turns into select and squash be careful of that it happens to the best of us all right I'm gonna bring it down just a little yeah just a little bit there okay cool now we are ready to go our sword is basically done let's go ahead and start looking at what we want hard versus what we want smooth so go back to the material editor and throw this generic material on there for now all right so when we do that hit Q select something else now um, we already have a little bit of a hard edge right here which is great this whole piece looks pretty good um, what we really want is a hard edge up here at the top I'm gonna hit P for perspective the blade in particular I really want every single one of these edges to be hard okay and the way I can do that is I can just go ahead and hit 4 to get all the polygons select the whole thing this whole thing and then I'm going to come up here to properties and click hold this little or click that pull down go hard selected when I do that now when I render it I should get nice hard edges yeah you can see those all right render now I am getting weird cross issues and that is because this doesn't quite match up all right we can actually go through and fix this I think that's these yes we just need to make sure these align with the top so these need to align with that so if I hit W grab one of these at a time hit S for snap and just make sure they snap together that will get rid of that weird edge we render it we may have to re uh, reapply the hard modifier to it but that should fix it though so under properties hard selected now down here I want this to be hard from separate from that separate from that and separate from that. so I want all those to be hard as well like that now this is different I want these to be smooth together but I want them to be separated by an edge so I want to go into properties I want to do smooth selected so click on that go smooth selected do the same thing here properties smooth All right same thing with this part of the handguard the hilt the blade the handguard so I'm going to go ahead and select these go into polygon now the other thing we can do instead of using the computer to sort of guess all this stuff we can actually control what things uh, what faces are soft through all the way at this bottom section through a thing called smoothing groups now you'll notice this is all five every single one of these is considered five because that's what's highlighted but when I click on this I get three so all these are considered three this one's considered four this one's probably two yep two and this one maybe one or six six this is one. Oh, seven we don't have a one now any numbers that are identical won't have any smoothing edge between them so between seven and three you're always going to have a hard edge there render it you can see the hard edge that looks good All right at the bottom here I've got some weird stuff whenever you extrude something you get real hard edges so what I want to do here is I'm going to grab all these I gotta grab the right object. Select the handle, hit four. I'll select all those. And now everything that I want to be smooth together, I'm going to increase this, grow this to grab. So I want all those to be smooth. I want that all to be a smooth, smooth edge. So I can go all the way down here. And right now, some some of these are set to smoothing group one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them to smoothie group one now, now that would look fine as long as this isn't also smoothing group one because it is it's going to give us weird shading like that see how it tries to fake the
the shading and then this is weird. So instead of making this one, right? Basically, anything but one would be fine. So I'm going to grab that and all of that, right? And instead of one, we're going to make it four. And this was one down here, so that means this can be one. As long as it's not touching, it can be the same group. All of these are the same. This is four. Uh, these are one, so four is good. Now, there's another cool way to do this. You can highlight one face, hold shift, click another one, and it gets all the entire ring. Um, I like that. That's a nice little touch. I'm going to grab all those. I'm actually going to grow. i got to be careful, actually, because F3. I don't want to get the top. As a matter of fact, if I'm making this so I'm not going to print it, I want to delete these. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and uh, hit F3 again to bring back this. I want to right click and uh, isolate this selection. And I'm going to highlight these edges. All right, now I could select them all, or I could hit left, zoom in, grab all of these, and hold Alt, deselect all of those, and hit delete. Good. This is great for video games because that means it's less edges that the computer has to think about. So this is really good for video games. However, if you're going to 3D print, um, this won't pass an STL check. And we'll talk about an STL check later. Or actually, I should have a video up on Donnan's tips and tricks. But for STLs, this is bad. Uh, but for video games, it's great. So we're going to go with the video game concept here. And isolate. All right, We have the same problem actually here. I want to isolate the blade. Look at the bottom. We have four. I grab those and deselect these. I have these four, or those uh, edges on the bottom I can delete. So from the front, and isolate. Okay, so that's all done. Cool, cool. All right, so all we have now is to make sure that this is smooth. I'll render it just to make sure. Looks pretty good. Maybe not. I don't know about this edge here. Yeah, that looks kind of weird. Um, let's check. Uh, let's check what smoothing groups it is. The bottom is. I need to get the right thing. I'm not on the blade. I need the handle. So all the way at the bottom. Hit four. Then go all the way to the bottom. So this is no smoothing groups. So each one of these will be hard. We don't want that. Um, this is one. So I can actually. I think all of these are one because I did them already. So I can select this hold shift, grab the entire ring and hit one. Now it's going to feel like it's rounded. You'll see when I render it. It's going to feel like it's rounded and I think that's what I'm going to go for. Nice rounded bottom. Alright, cool. Hit P for perspective. Cool, cool. So now that's that's all the smoothing groups. We're in good shape there. Um, I'm going to actually hit F10 and change my output size which is here to HDTV, render it, I can get a better look at how this thing looks, sorry about that, render, alright cool, that's good, it looks a little weird now, but when we put some color to it, it's going to make a lot more sense, which we should do, so let's go ahead and do that, so from the left, uh, from the left view, I'm going to hit 4, and I'm going to select uh, this middle section, and I'm going to go all the way to the top, I don't, I'm done with my smoothing groups. I want to grow this selection. That's good. I think that's all I want to grow it because I just want the leather part. This will just be leather. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit M for material. And this first one, uh, I'm going to call leather. Leather. And I'm going to pick leather. And I'm going to pick a brown color. All right. Brown is. There. One more brown. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. And now I'm going to drag that just onto there. Cool. Now the whole thing turned brown, and we'll fix that in a second. Next, we need a brass. Okay. Uh, let's call it brass. This will be the hilt and the pommel and the little piece on the blade. So brass is like a yellowish orange. I like that. Maybe a little more orangey. 
That looks pretty good. All right, now all the brass stuff is from the left. We're just doing the handle right now, so I'm going to grab that stuff and all of that. Now, there's a little edge down there and a little edge up here. Um, I think I'll be able to go grow, grow. I did twice to get under there, but I think it probably jumped up a little here. I don't want that. So once those faces are selected, I can just drag my material on there and it automatically applies to just the faces I had selected. All right, cool. Now I can go back into create. You can see it's starting to come together. My chocolate sword. I hit M, drag the brass onto there. That's done. Select this and go to the modify tab, polygon. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to grow it by one. That should bring me up to the edge here. I'm going to drag this onto that. And then I'm actually going to go uh, up here to select. Uh, I think I've gotten the select by inverse. Maybe it's. Mm, no, I feel bad. It's taking too long. And there it is. Select inverted. So that grabs just the blade because all I had was the other piece before. And now I'm going to go over here and create the blade color. Blade. So to me, the blade is basically white with maybe a hint of blue. Right? Like that, maybe. Just a little, just a tiny little bit of blue. Mostly white. Right? Maybe a little touch of blue. All right, good. You can do what you want. You can make it blood red for all I care. All right. Now oh, that's good. I'm going to drag that on there. Cool. Now, the color's good. The last thing I want to do is sort of modify the spec before we take a picture. So that means the specularity is over here under specular highlights. And for the blade in particular, I want it to be like a glossy, shiny blade. So um, go ahead and turn the specular level up to like 100. Uh, and then I like to clamp the glossiness down to like 70 or 75. So we're talking like super shiny. Now for the brass, I would say a specular level of maybe 50, right? And a glossiness 25 seems right to me, all right? And the leather, obviously no gloss. We don't want any gloss. Uh, I would th wouldn't think, maybe some softening. You can adjust that however you feel um, that it looks the best. I'll try and render that out. Make sure you're getting a nice perspective view. There. See, we got a little shininess there. The blade itself. I should render that out. Get something. Get a nice glint on there. All right. There you go. That's the idea. So there's our glossy blade. It's not quite as glossy as I want, but that's okay. All right. So there we go. So now all we have to do is get ready to render it. So sh hold uh, Shift F, and that brings this up. Now earlier we reset uh, our F10. We hit F10 and change output size to HDTV. So that's why I've got this. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna save it. You should save it too before you start doing anything crazy. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing. Uh, go to creative mode. Highlight the whole thing. Hit E. Rotate it a bit. W, move it, turn snapping off, you crazy guy. Get it right, oh, I like that. That's pretty cool. All right, and rotate it maybe a little more. Rotate it like that. And try and make it fit well within the actual scene. You can come down here to this zoom tool and zoom in like that. That looks pretty good. Render it. There you go. That's basically it. You are done. You've created a sword. Uh, make the master sword jealous. Render it up. All right. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. We could definitely uh, figure out how those hard edges are coming out. Um, that probably could be fixed. 
Uh, let's grab the blade. So I could grab this and then make sure it's smooth by going to modeling. Uh, and going actually all the way down here, making sure that it has an edge. So it doesn't really have a number. I couldn't make sure each one of these has a number, and I think that will get rid of it. So that if that's one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. And then I go to the other side and say this is five, six, seven, eight. All right, cool. Let's look at that now. I thought that's going to look way better. Render it out. Oh, yeah, that's a way, way better. Way, way, way better. Get like a good angle on it. Maybe zoom in a little bit more. Render. Oh, yeah, that's way, way cooler. I think that's a good layout. I'm going to keep that one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this image. All right. And I'm going to call it uh, Q5 Day 1 TN Day 2, actually. Day 2 thumbnail. Yeah. All right. And that's it. We're done. I hope you enjoyed making the sword. I hope you learned a little bit about loop modeling and about how to make things look soft uh, versus hard edges. Soft edges versus hard edges. I really, You know what? It's crazy how cool this part here. I, f I feel like that just makes the sword so much cooler because it's got that tiny little bit of of like blade like glued I don't even, I don't even know what that part would be called but it looks like it really holds the blade in it's like part of the handle um, I think that really turns out well um, if you want let's look at some of the extensions right so extensions you could add more detail so you can make more small ridges you could do like little filigree fancy runes or something in the uh, on the on the hilt you could put a, like some sort of groove along this blade um, there's a ton of stuff you could do uh, when it comes to adding more detail or you could start over and make a totally different weapon you can make a, a mace so it's like a stick with a ball on the end and spikes you can make sure the ball is smooth but the spikes come out real and they have a nice hard edge on them so there's a lot you can do with it so yeah so knock yourself out do something cool make something awesome uh, that's the whole point. All right. I hope you enjoyed making the sword and thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.